welcome back to Britannia Pets with me, Tanya. And as you can tell, I'm in a different place today. I'm in the bathroom, which can only mean one thing. We are going to be bathing our dogs. So yes, very important. In the recent week, I've been seeing lots of posts being posted on, on social media of people bathing their dogs at home in, in, in the light of the groomers being shut. <laughs> Some of them have been very, very funny. Um, others have been downright scary, uh, so no better time than to produce a video on how to bath your dogs than, than right now. I will show you ways to do it safely and easily in a way that's not going to stress your dog out or yourself. You might still get wet, but that's part of the course. Now, there are things you're going to need. I have to admit, I don't wash my own dogs at home. At the end of the day, I've got a perfectly serviceable, serviceable salon. My dogs go to work with me every day, usually. And so when they get mucky, I will whip them in the bath at the salon where I've got my plethora of products that I can use, my decent serviced equipment um, and staff to help me as well. Whereas at home, I have none of that. So principally, I've got what you've got. I did find a little bottle of pet shampoo that uh, I got given to me at one point in, in a, a gift pack. Um, so you need your shampoo, you will need a jug, and I'll explain why you need a jug in a bit, and a sponge. And this sponge, I went shopping yesterday. Yes, I braved the shops and it wasn't as bad as everyone says. I did have to queue outside for half an hour to go in, but the shelves were fully stocked and everything was fine and dandy. I managed to get my pastry, woohoo! So yes, a sponge, this cost 50p. Um, but you'll see why I use a sponge and why I advocate a sponge. If you don't have a sponge at home, absolutely fine. Uh, one of these net scrunchy things will do. Um, yeah, but, but something to apply product onto your dog is really, really useful. This isn't like the sponges I use at work, but I couldn't get the same ones that I have at work at home. So my 50p sponge will do. Of course, you're also going to need a towel. So yes, my dogs have their own towel that's different to our towels. If you don't, then that's fine. Just find it in a really good wash afterwards. Not a problem. So let's get this show on the road. I'm going to have to change the angle of the camera and of course grab one of my dogs. I'm not using Amber today. To be honest with you, I really don't fancy spending the rest of my day drying her with my handheld hair dryer. Call me weird, that's not my idea of a fun day. And even though we're in lockdown and we've got plenty of time, there are still other things I'd rather be doing. So I will be using one of my chihuahuas, which will make life a lot easier, a lot simpler. But the principles will still be the same, regardless of whether you've got a little short-coated breed or a massive curly-coated breed like Amber. One thing I will say, if you do have a massive curly coated breed like Amber, make sure your dog is absolutely well brushed out and not knotted before you even think of bathing. As a salon owner and a pet groomer, the one thing that I often hear when I'm putting a comb through the dog and I'm showing the owner the knots in the coat and why it's too much for us to save, and we've got to do a shave down, which I hate, trust me, no groomer likes that ever, ever, ever. It's not the easy option, it's horrible. So yeah, um, if your dog does come in, and the, the number of times that an owner said to me, I don't understand why it's matted. I've been bathing the dog regularly. Bathing doesn't remove mats from a coat. It doesn't stop knots from forming. In fact, bathing a coat with knots in can actually make those knots get tighter. If you think of it like having a pure wool jumper, for example, and you put it in the washing machine and then you put it in the tumble dryer, what happens is that jumper shrinks. Okay, Every, the, 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 the yarn shrinks and makes it tighter and shorter and smaller. Who's done that with a jumper and then it's come out tiny? I know I, know I have a long time ago, I learned my lesson. Uh, but the same happens with the dog's coat. When it's matted, you get it wet, you get it dry. And what happens is those mats will absorb the water and then they shrink with it drying, especially if you're drying with a heat source, such as a hairdryer, um, 
it's, it gets even tighter and those mats can actually get worse and tighter to the skin. So do make sure that your dog is well brushed out before even thinking about bathing. The brushing is more important than anything else. During this period of lockdown when I can't get my own Amber into the salon to bath her, I'm not going to. It's that simple. Any areas that get in a mess will be spot washed. So what I mean by that is just washing the area that needs it rather than the entire dog. Keeping her brushed out in the meantime is the most important thing. But anyway, let's get a dog, change the camera angle and I will show you how to wash your dog in the calmest way possible to keep your dog and yourself sane. Now get prepared before you get your dog in the bath. Um, so often I see people grabbing their dogs, putting them in the bath, grabbing the, the shower hose and then liberally applying water to the dog. The dog's getting all panicky, upset, trying to scrabble out of the bath and then you're fumbling around trying to get your shampoo, squirting the shampoo all over the dog and then trying to, to, to massage it in whilst the dog's fighting you. I see that so often and it's not helpful. It's pretty stressful. And the likelihood of you getting your dog properly clean is next to zero. Uh, you're going to miss all the areas that really do need it. Um, and you're going to waste product as well. And, and shampoo is not cheap. So there is an easy way to do this that actually makes sense when you think about it. Don't wet your dog first. A, the dogs hate it. Um, so calm is better. Also, the hair follicles are absorbent, so whatever first goes onto the coat, whatever liquid source, is what the, the hair is mostly going to absorb. And in applying water first, then the coat is going to absorb just water, which is fine if that's all you want it to absorb, but we actually want to clean the coat. So what we want to get on the coat in the first instance is the cleaning product that has the surfactants that clean the hair. Uh, so we're going to add the shampoo to water and then apply that mixture directly to the coat while it's dry. So grab your shampoo and this is what you're going to need a jug for and I'm going to stand up for this. Open your shampoo bottle, blob the mixture in. Different shampoos have different dilution ratios. Uh, so check the, the instructions. Um, some shampoos that are, that are made for the home don't have dilution radio ratios. Don't worry. Uh, Luna's only a tiny dog, so I've only put a tiny bit of shampoo in. And then a little bit of water. And that's, that's probably more than we're going to need for Luna. Then you're going to mix it all up, make sure that the product is mixed in nicely with the water. And that's already set up and prepared so that when you've got your dog, you're ready straight away with your mixture. Blob your sponge in that and then apply the coat, apply this to the coat straight from the sponge. Yeah. Not your turn, no. And then give your dog a really nice massage. They all like a massage. And especially around the shoulder area, around the backs of the ears, the inner thigh. All these areas feel really, really good to a dog. They do, yeah. And I still haven't done the face. The face is always the last thing. Why? Because dogs don't like their faces being wet. And we want them to be as compliant as possible for as long as possible. <laughs> I've got my other dogs climbing all over me. Yeah, they're jealous. Mm -hmm. They are. They want the fussy you've got. Yeah. 
all the way through the coat. Are you a good girl? Yes. Once we move on to the head, there's something I need you to note, okay? The last thing we want is for any water to go into the ear canals. So, the one thing I want you to do, grab a cotton wool ball, pull off the right amount, and literally pop it into your dog's ears. And this will offer protection in the form of a little plug against water going in there. And make sure you put it in there reasonably firmly because otherwise your dog's going to shake their head and it's going to come popping out. But do that before you start the head. Let's start on the top of the head but away from the eyes. Okay, if you've got a dog with a long beard, you'll need to apply it liberally to the mush. But after that, I prefer to use my hands. Mostly because what it does, it offers the dog a little bit of reassurance. And don't forget, gently rubbing in front of the eye area where you get the tear stains. I need little eye boogers. And all around the face, all the time talking to the dog in a lovely, calm manner so that they don't feel stressed in any way, shape or form. Always offering reassurance. Yeah, you're such a good girl. You are. Yeah, you good girl. You good, good girl. And once the, the shampoo has been applied, we can then get to the job of rinsing off. Not always the most fun bit for the dog, um, but it does mean that the end is near. Now make sure the water temperature is warm enough first, because the last thing you want to do is totally freeze your dog, um, but it's not too hot, because you don't want to burn your dog either. Start on the body. And if you hold it close to the skin, it's not going to make as much noise and not going to be as uh, scary as it would otherwise. You also, if you're lucky enough to have a nice pressure on your shower head, going to massage the skin and get right down to the root of the problem, so to speak. Again, leave the head to last. Make sure you properly, properly rinse off all of that product. Okay, when it comes to the head, there is a particular way of doing it. Okay, remove her. You don't want to run the risk of the dog getting water in the ears, so we plug those. You also don't want to run the risk of water going up the nose, especially if you've got a brachycephalic breed, such as a Shih Tzu or a Pug. So hold the head down, and then gently run the water over the head so that it can't go up the nose. I know, baby, I know, but it has to be done, it does. Always protect the nose. And get wet. Bang! Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Once all of the shampoos off, 
use your hands to gently push the water out of the coats. Amber, you're not on your turn, it's not. She's only having a bath. Good girl. Grab your towel. No more, no more smooshies. out of the bath, wrap them up in a towel and throw some love their way. They didn't want to be bathed. They'd been cultivating this disgusting smell which to them is delightful for many weeks, possibly months, sometimes even years. They're proud of their accomplishments in the smell department which to them smells absolutely gorgeous and you've just taken it all away from them without their permission. So throw some love their way. It's an ideal opportunity to really, really love on your dog. Oh, he's a good girl. Are you a good girl? And the dogs always, without fail, love a good old towel wrap. It's comforting, it's snuggly. Yeah. Oh, he's a good girl. Yeah. Now, when it comes to drying, obviously it's a lot easier with a little short haired goat dog like like Luna here, um, but regardless of your dog, dry the muzzle area, dry the top of the head as softly and gently as you can, but do the face first, because as I've said previously, the one area they hate, don't forget to take cotton wool out, oh, which I've already done. He's a good girl. Yeah, yeah, gosh, good girl. <laughs> oh, Tori, it'll be your turn later, okay? No need to growl at your sister. She just wants some love and cheer. Okay, when you are using the towel on your dog, oh, microfiber towels are great. Don't have them at home. Um, don't be doing that and, and rubbing the coat. Uh, not if you've got a, a longer coated breed because what you'll be doing at that point is putting knots back into the coat. So don't do that. Gentle rubbing and squeezing all over. You'll find the dogs love it. Stop growling at your sister. She just wants to love on you. She does. She just wants to love your... <laughs> Oh, I've got a nice wet patch on my jeans now. And move down the body. So dry those little legs and feet. Don't forget the armpits. Don't forget the tummy. But this is why it's so important to have your dog well brushed out before you attempt to bathe. The drying takes an awful lot longer when you've got knots in a coat. Whereas a well brushed out coat dries a lot quicker. As obviously each hair has the surface area is free to, to feel the air and, and benefit from the drying process. Where if it's knotted up, there's no room for the air to get in and help to dry. So it will take a lot longer. Oh, is that good, good girl? Yeah, you're nearly dry already. I wish all dogs dried this quickly. Oh, and you, you don't. You take hours. You're disappointed you're not the star today. Is that it?
Now with a longer coated bead, once you've got the, the wet, heavy water away from the coat using your towel, stop grounding at your sister. Uh, it would be time now to get the hairdryer out and obviously when you're at home, you've only got a domestic hairdryer. It will take you an awful lot longer than it would us at the salon when we have a plethora of, of different drying uh, equipment with different capabilities, different power settings and, and heat settings that does the job way, way easier. Um, but when you're at home, as I said, this is why I'm only going to be spot cleaning amber because it will be a case of using your hair dryer and drying one area at a time, but do not put the heat setting too high. You'll irritate the dog's skin. You'll also dry out the hair follicles, which is not a healthy situation to be in. And again, with a longer coated dog, if you dry on too high a, a seat, too high a heat setting, you will actually damage that coat, um, which will make it more prone to matting. So this is where the dangers of, of drying um, and bathing your dogs with a longer coat, really it does matter how you, uh, you know, use the products, use the drying um, uh, and you know, longer coats, the higher maintenance, um, which is why groomers charge more. It takes us longer to dry a longer coat because we have to use lower heat settings to, to stop the risk of drying that coat out uh, and damaging it. You're good to go. Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Yes. She's now dry enough to be let loose to run around uh, in, in the house. And she'll dry in next to no time, fortunately. Um, yeah, if, if she had a longer coat, I'd be then spending the rest of the time with the hair dryer. Um, if it's a sunny day, it helps <laughs> to allow them out into the back garden. So when you are planning on bathing your dog, check the weather, because if that's in your favour, it makes life a heck of a lot, a lot easier. Anyway, I hope that's helped. I hope that's given you a few hints, tips and tricks that will make life easier for you and your dog. Uh, to make things less stressful. So many people tell me their dogs hate being bathed um, and nine times out of ten it, it's, it's the way that it's done um, that they hate, whereas done in a way that's gentle, kind and using products in the right way can really, really help to make the difference. So we'll see you on the other side of this. Now your dogs have had their feet trimmed, their nails clipped, they're fully brushed out, their ears are lovely and clean and now they've had a bath. What more could you need? Thanks for watching. Bye.